Elapsed time, part one. Definition of, of elapsed time is the amount of time that has passed between two given times. Here's a picture of what that means. If you are given a start time and a finish time, the elapsed time is the amount of time that has passed between those two points. When we are working with elapsed time in real life and in the math classroom, there are generally three types of questions that you might come across. First, you might be given a start time and an end time and try to figure out the amount of time that has elapsed. For example, if you fall asleep at a certain time and wake up at a certain time, you might wonder how much time, how many hours did I sleep? Well, that would, you would be finding out the amount of time that has elapsed between when you fell asleep and when you woke up. Uh, some problems give you a start time and an elapsed time and you have to come up with an end time. In real life, if you know the time that a movie started and you knew that it was going to last a certain amount of time, say one hour and 45 minutes, for example, you might want to know what time the movie was going to end. And you would do that by um, adding on the amount of time that the movie was going to take. And finally, sometimes you are given an, an end time and an elapsed time and have to figure out a, the start time. You do this all the time when you are going places. If you know what time you need to be somewhere and how long, how many hours, and how many minutes it takes you to drive there, then, that, then figuring out the start time lets you know what time you need to get in the car and go in order to be on time. Before we get into solving problems like that, let's talk about one thing that I find that fourth graders commonly get confused about, and that is the difference between AM and PM. Um, I've drawn a day timeline here that might help us pick out some of the most important times of the day and figure out if they are AM and PM. Um, so the day, the calendar day, starts at midnight. When it uh, clicks over, it's at 12 AM. And 12 a.m., it is the middle of the night. We call that midnight, and you should be sleeping. Then you sleep for about six more hours, and somewhere around six or seven o'clock, you wake up, and that would be 6 a.m. Then about 9 a.m., we are saying the pledge at school on a normal day. And then 12 hours after midnight, we get to 12 p.m., and it clicks over into the afternoon. Uh, that's when the sun is highest in the sky, and we call 12 p.m. noon. That's right after, for us, right after we have finished lunch. Then the afternoon would be 3, 4 p.m., and that's about 4 p.m. is about when you are going home from school. And then you would eat dinner in this time here, and you would go to bed around 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., and then once it gets to 11.59 p.m., and then the next minute is 12 a.m., the next day begins. So the way, one way that might help you to remember it, when you look at a.m. and p.m. in the alphabet, a comes before p, it, this, part, this first part of the day, the a.m. part of the day, comes before the p.m. part of the day. So let's use a strategy, the big jumps, little jumps strategy, to start solving some elapsed time problems. I arrived at the airport at 9.55 a.m. My flight was delayed and didn't leave until 2.15 p.m. How long was I in the airport? The answer is too long. No, just kidding. Um, so we have to, it's helpful each time to figure out what you have and what you need to know. So on each problem, you're going to notice that I recorded the two amounts or the two times or amounts that I know and then what was missing. So I started this whole um, airport trip at 9.55. I got there at 9.55 and I left the airport at 2.15. That was my end time. I need to know how long was I in the airport. So I'm trying to find out the elapsed time. Well, one strategy that I would recommend is to make big jumps first if you're trying to find the elapsed time. And the biggest, easiest amount of time to work with, really, is an hour. So I'm going to jump forward, and I'm going to draw it kind of like a number line, like I'm skipping down the number line. So jump forward one hour from 9.55 a.m. is going to be 10.55 a.m. Then I'm going to jump another hour to 11.55 a.m. So this is an hour here. 
Then I'm going to jump another hour to 1255. But right there, we've passed over that lunchtime noon hour. This is now 12.55 p.m., so that was an hour there. Remember, I've got to go all the way to 2.15. So now I'm going to jump, and I don't go to 13.55, of course. It t turns over to 1.55 p.m. That was an hour. And then if I were to make another hour jump, it would go to 2.55 p.m., which is too far for here. So now I'm going to start thinking in smaller jumps. Sometimes you might jump in 30-minute increments, 15-minute increments, 10-minute increments, 5-minute increments, and sometimes even 1-minute increments. So something really easy that my brain is want, wanting to think is, let me jump to 2 o'clock, because I know exactly how many minutes that is to 2 o'clock p.m. That would be just 5 minutes, because 55 plus 5 would bump me over to the 2 o'clock hour. That's 5 minutes before 2. And then I just have to go to 2.15 as my last jump. So from 2 o'clock to 2.15 was 15 minutes. So this was 5 minutes and 15 minutes. Then I want to add together all of my jumps. 1, 2, 3, 4 hours. And then 5 minutes and 15 minutes together makes 20 minutes. This is much clearer than writing it like this. Sometimes you'll see people do this. But this, this makes you think about 4.20 in the afternoon or in the morning. We're talking about elapsed time, so we need to write it that 4 hours and 20 minutes has passed. So notice again, big jumps, little jumps. I took care of lots of the, I took care of all the hour jumps that I could, and when I couldn't jump another hour, then I got to pick what amount of minutes made sense for me. I could have, I could have jumped 10 minutes all at once, or even made the 15 minutes all at once, but I like to go to the hour and then keep going past that two o'clock hour. Sometimes you need to jump backwards. So let's see an example where we're going to use that strategy. I have to arrive at my cousin's birthday party by 5.15 p.m. It's going to take me three hours to drive there, and I need to allow 45 minutes for getting a present. What time should I plan to leave my house? So again, we think about what we have and what we need to know in this story. We know that I, we need to be arrive at our, this party by 5.15 p.m., and we know that it's going to take us three hours to drive and 45 minutes to go shopping for a present. So we know that our elapsed time is going to be three hours and 45 minutes to get there. So we need to know what time to start. So notice last time I was jumping left to right. This time I'm going back in time to find out what time to start. So I'm going to jump back three hours and 45 minutes. And I'm going to take care of my hours first and then my minutes, just like the last time. So jumping back an hour would be 4.15. Back another hour would be 3.15. Oops, this is the one. I'm keeping track of the hours up here. Whoops. This is the 3.15. Jumping back another hour would be 2.15. Now I need to check again how far I'm supposed to go. I need to go three hours, which I've taken care of the three hours there. And then I need to go back 45 minutes. So I'm going to jump um, in 15 minute groups, just so that I can keep track of it. So back 15 minutes would be 2.30. Nope, just kidding. I'm going forward just then. Back 15 minutes would be 2 o'clock. You have to remember which direction you're going in. Back 15 more minutes would be 1.45. And so that's 30 minutes. I need to go 15 more. 15 more minutes would be 1.30. And notice that I never crossed the 12. I never went into the a.m. time, so I'm still on p.m. So my answer would be that I need to leave at 1.30 p.m. in order to get there. Let's do one more problem where we need to use jumps. And this time we're going to see that not every time are you going to start with full hours. It might help you to start with smaller pieces sometimes. We left the house at 11.20 a.m. Google Maps says it will take us 6 hours and 35 minutes to get to Grandma's house. Are we going to make it in time for dinner at 5.45 p.m.? Now, the interesting thing about this problem is that I already see three times or amounts. I have three different numbers here. And you might be tempted to think that I have all the information. What's the question? 
but this right here is a goal and so it's not part of our story yet except to compare our answer to this goal so we know that our trip is going to has already started at 1120 and we know that we're going to be going for six hours and 35 minutes what we don't know yet is what time we're going to get there so we're going to get our answer and then compare it to see if we're going to make it by 5:45 p.m so Sometimes I could jump an hour to go straight to 12.20, but sometimes it's easier to work on the hour. So I'm going to jump to 12 o'clock, that would be noon, and think about from 11.20 to 12 o'clock is 40 minutes. Okay. Then I'm going to make hour jumps next, and, and I can count that because it's easy to count on the hour. So, and I'm going to maybe even keep track on my fingers how many hours I've gone. So this would be 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, that's 2 hours, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So let's double check that I've gone 6, jump, six hours, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this is 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Now, if I look how far I've gone, I have gone six hours. Each of one of these was an hour and 40 minutes. I'm only five minutes off of this. I went five minutes too many. So sometimes you can go forward and then to get to your answer, you might jump back a tiny bit. So I'm gonna just jump back five minutes to take off five from this so that I can get to 35. So if I jump back five minutes, I'm at 5.55, that's the time that I'm gonna arrive at Grandma's house, 5.55 p.m. I needed to arrive at 5.45 p.m., which is um, gonna be about 10 minutes late. So to answer this question, no, we're not really gonna make it in time for dinner at 5.45.